Well, hey crafty friends, it's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming and on today's devotional, we are working through this great little book called Go For It by Melissa Horvath and we are almost finished. We are on number 84 today, which is called Gaining Confidence. And um, as you were hopping on, say hello to me. Let me know that I'm not just sitting in my craft room looking at my Bible and talking out loud to my phone. <laughs> um, feel free to ask questions, feel free to sprinkle, all that normal good stuff. And um, so this is, like I say almost every day, this is another great day. Some great thoughts to think about. Um, so let me pray and then we will hop right in. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for this devotional, Lord. Thank you for this time that we can look at your word and take a moment or two to reflect. Thank you for this topic today, which is uh, the author labeled it Gaining Confidence. And um, I just pray that you will give me the words that you would have me speak and that these verses will be an encouragement to the people who are out there watching this both now, live, and in the future on replay, and that they will draw near to you, Lord. And I pray all of this in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okie dokie. <clears throat> so, the author here is um, quoting from 2 Timothy verse, chapter 1, verse 7. And she says, for the spirit God gave us does not make us timid, but gives us power, love, and self-discipline. Isn't that good? Um, so I'm going to just start reading and then I'm going to come back to a verse in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Okay, she says, some of us are more confident than others, but how about gaining confidence in the Lord? Jesus is and was confident, not arrogant. There is a big difference, but it's important to recognize that we can be one, not the other, as we lay down our own plans and pick up what God has for us instead. We need to be confident in our faith walk with the Lord to see us through. We can have confidence in God's plans for us. Yes, we absolutely can. Um, he tells us in Jeremiah that he has a, a, a plan for us, a plan to prosper us and not to harm, harm us, a plan to give us a hope and a future. And um, he is a good, loving father. So the plan he has for each one of us, which is basically what this book is all about, is how we can boldly live the life that God has created uniquely for each one of us. Um, the plan God has for each one of us is good. It, it may not be what I had envisioned for my life. And there's going to be difficulties along the path for sure because we're living in this fallen world and um, we're human, uh, interacting with other humans in our bodies are, you know, over time failing. Uh, so, okay, then she goes on to say, God's work is never finished in us. He won't say, here's your life, and then leave us. Um, let's remain faithful and be confident that he's got us. We are reminded in 1 John chapter 3, verses 20 to 21, to have confidence in God. And he is greater than our hearts. He knows our hearts. He knows everything. He stands, God stands in a unique position in time. He's standing in the past, the present, and the future all at once. He can see how the past, present, and future all work together. He knows what you're thinking, what's on your heart, before you can even verbalize it to him. Um, hi, Susie. So um, then she goes on to say, God wants to have a relationship with us. He will seek us and he wants, to he wants us to come to him with everything, our cares, dreams, desires, and needs. He wants us to bring all of those burdens to him. 
as we give these up, we can have confidence that God will take care of them all for his glory and his timing. And um, this made me think about um, this verse in 2 Corinthians where Paul is talking about how um, in his personal weakness, he can boast about God's power and strength. So let me read that. It's 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12, verse 9. And it says, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. And you guys, that part is in red. So that is something that Jesus himself said. Therefore, I will, and this is Paul, the Apostle Paul. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. And um, I wrote here in my notes, the weaker you are, the more obvious God's power is. So we can, we can have confidence in, um, in God and his, what he's going to do with our lives. We can trust him and we can boast in his plan. And that is not the same thing as being arrogant. Um, Okay, so then she says in this last paragraph, we are not called to boast in arrogance, but we can share this great news with others. God is with us, he is for us, and he will never forsake us. And then she says in the go for it, as you boldly live out God's plans for you, stay confident in your walk with the Lord. You can come to him anytime for anything. He hears all of your prayers and cries and knows your deepest desires and struggles. As you build your confidence in the Lord, others will be able to see this through you and want to know more about the hope that you have found in Jesus. Isn't that good? Um, so the longer we know Jesus, the more confidence we have in him, the more we know about him, the more confidence we have in him, the more life experiences we have had where we gave it all to Jesus, we trusted him, the more we can have confidence in him. It's, it's just building. And when we have confidence in him and his plan, then we can... Uh, boldly live the life that God has for each one of us. So I thought that was really good. If you have Bible verses that popped out in your mind to you from this uh, day, put them in the comments. Um, I'm going to pray and then I will um, say goodbye and I hope you'll come back this afternoon. I think we're going to do some oyster shell craft projects. I'm not 100% certain, but it's a strong possibility. Okay, the next one up is, ooh, is number 85. And it's called Loving the Unlovable. Wow, that should be good. So, all right, Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Thank you that you have a plan. Lord, thank you that you are for us that you know us, that you love us, and that you want us to trust you um, because you are trustworthy. You are loving. You are in command of everything. You are in control of everything. And you stand in the past, present, and future, and it all makes sense to you where uh, humans with our human minds just simply cannot even understand that. So Lord, I just pray that um, this, these realizations will give us more confidence in you and in your plan. And if we don't know you very well, um, it will be an encouragement to get to know you better, to get into the Bible, to get into your holy word 
to pray, to listen for the Holy Spirit's prompting, um, and just to grow closer and closer to you. I just pray all of this in the precious name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okie dokie. Well, thank you guys so much for joining me. I will see you guys uh, for number 85 the next time we are together. I'm going to put in the comments a link to this awesome book. I'm going to put in the comments a link to my YouTube playlist where I have all of these past videos. All 83 of them recorded, labeled, and they're on a playlist called Go For It. And then I'm going to put a link to an online Bible store that sells a lot of different kinds of Bibles. But one thing they sell are life application study Bibles, and um, those are great. And they um, have them in a variety of translations, a variety of sizes, and a variety of price points. So I'm going to do that. Uh, but let me know if you had some Bible verses that popped out to you when we were talking about day 84 or if you have questions. And um, thank you so much for joining me and I hope to see you again very soon.